All right, church. Well, let's open up our Bibles together to the book of Deuteronomy. As we continue our series, we are family. We are family. Um, We are in part two of kind of the third section of our journey together called Be the Church. Uh, We considered what it means to love the Lord. Week two, build the home. And last week, we jumped into Be the Church, and we're kind of breaking this up into a three-part series. We have a lot to unpack together, and I can't wait to jump in. Um, We are in this series. We are family series, and we've established this beautiful picture of who the church is, right? That we are a family. We are children in God's family. We are members of God's household. We are connected as God's body. We are united for God's glory. And so we've challenged each other to love the Lord. How do we do that? Seek his presence, obey his priority, trust his promise. We challenge each other to build the home. Why? We looked at our identity, we looked at our obedience, we looked at our future. And then last week, we kind of took a little detour and we went into Matthew. We considered the words of Jesus, what it means to be the church, because This Shema is not just for ourselves. It's not just an inward prayer for those who already know the Lord. No, it's an empowerment prayer. It's an equipping prayer. It's a commission prayer. We've been called to love God and to love our neighbor, right? To love people. I'm so thankful for all that God's doing in us. But how many of y'all want to believe that the things that God's pouring in us, he also wants to do through us for his kingdom and for his glory. So let's stand in honor of God's word. As we get equipped from God's word, we talked about being salt, being light, being both last week. I wanna unpack some more from the Shema, locking in on these three focuses, heart, soul, and might today, and challenge ourselves on what it means to be the church. The word of the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter six, verse one through nine says this. Now, this is the commandment, the statutes and the rules that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you, that you may do them in the land to which you are going over to possess it, that you may fear the Lord your God, you and your son and your son's son, by keeping all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life that your days may be long. Hear, everybody say hear. This is that word, Shema, everybody say Shema. Hear, therefore, O Israel. Remember, we're not just kind of listening. Man, this is a call to action, right? Here, we wanna apply this, we wanna own this, we wanna multiply this, we wanna live it out. Hear therefore, O Israel, and be careful to do them that it may go well with you and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord, the God of your fathers has promised you in a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, there's that word, Shema, O Israel. The Lord, our God, the Lord is one. Why don't we read verse five together out loud? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your might. Let's say that again, verse five. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your might. Verse six, and these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. Shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. Um, parents, can I get a witness? Parenting is hard. <laughs> Parenting is really hard. What a beautiful picture we had up here of these parents coming and dedicating these little ones unto the Lord. And uh, will we commit, church, to pray for these parents and, and to pray for all our parents? I mean, parenting is hard. You know when I found out it was really hard? It was when my kids started copying me. Anybody else feel that pressure? 
I mean, there's a crazy truth (laughs) that most of what we parents complain about with our kids, if we really are honest with ourselves, we're like, oh, snap, that little sinner is just like me. (laughs) Now, we established last week, right, all of sin falling short of the glory of God. We don't have to teach our little ones how to sin. No, they are going to sin, but we have a responsibility, don't we? And so fundamentally, as we consider this Be the Church Challenge, if I can this week, I want to lock in on a very important question first. Who are you? Who are you? See, as I've got these four kids and I do start to see some things that I'm like, oh man, that wasn't good. Why'd the boys talk to their mama that way? I'm like, oh, I'm talking to mama that way. And I start to unpack and I start to analyze and I start to uh, realize that maybe there's some things that I need to get correct as I hope to see my kids walk in the ways of the Lord as well. Because our kids do follow us. And so we're gonna kind of get a little personal here and and, and we're gonna answer kind of this question Who should you be? And then next week, right, I'm going to answer the question, who should we be? And we're going to make this a little bit more of a community thing, right? Because isn't it great to have this time of dedication where we say, hey, you're not alone. We're with you. We're here with you. We're going to do this together, right? And so there's a community element, but there's, first of all, this personal element, So let's consider three major things. Who should you be? First of all, you should be one who loves the Lord with all your heart. With all your heart. I read a lot this past week, so anything I'm pretty much saying came from somewhere else, okay? But I read this past week, you know, this Hebrew word heart, levav, or more often in a shorter form, lev, Um, For the Jewish people, the heart encompassed your mind, your will, and your deepest desires. When God calls us to love him with all our heart, he's asking for a love that governs every thought and every decision of our life. To love God with all our heart means to set our affections on him above all else. And isn't that the goal, parents? But we want to see our kids have their affections on God above anything that this world has to offer. So your heart is where your affections are centered and ultimately where your actions will be driven. It's a challenge, right, parents? We don't just consider their external actions. No, we want to get to their Heart. If you're honest with yourself, that external action came because at the root there was a heart issue. It was a heart issue. So um, I, I want to read a number of different scriptures today. So you might want to just write down the references because I didn't give my media team a heads up. Luke 6.45 says this, The good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good. The evil person out of his evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. A big phrase you're going to hear repeated over and over in kind of culture today is follow your heart. Follow your heart. Whatever's good, just follow your heart. Be true to your heart. Um, your heart's good. I, I got to play golf with one of my best buds from high school this week, and he brought his 10-year-old son, and I brought Mac, one of my twin boys, and uh, on the third hole, Harvey, you'll love this. 
I mean, this kid's got a heart for golf. At 10, he is obsessed with golf, and he's playing in tournaments, and it was so funny. I'm watching him with his dad, which is kind of fun for me, and my friend Mackenzie, who was in high school with me years ago, and I actually had the privilege of leading him to the Lord when we were in high school, and so to see this little guy right now, and his name's Camden, and I'm telling you, like, he missed this putt. <laughs> it was awesome. We had, we had golf carts, and he looks at his dad, and he goes, I'm walking to the next hole. I mean, he just, he had this passion, right? And I'm like, dude's 10 and he cares that much about missing a putt? He might beat Scotty Scheffler one day. So you're like, who's that? I'm talking golf. Um, heart can be good. Passions that we have for things can lead us to do great things, but we gotta be careful with our hearts, don't we? We've gotta be careful because there's a lot of bad Romans 3.23 says this, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Psalm 51.5, behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Matthew 15.19, for out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. Jeremiah 17, nine through 10, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. So, follow your heart. Seems like um, we've got to do some things before we quote unquote follow our heart. Love the Lord with all our heart. So what will it take for us to love the Lord with all our heart? Number one, you want to write this down, surrender. Surrender. If you truly want to follow your heart, have you surrendered your heart? The only hope, the only hope for all of humanity is the total renewal of the heart. And this is the work of God. This is not the work of man. Parents, this is not the work of parents. This is the work of God. God transforms hearts. I know he's transformed mine by his grace. You know, in Deuteronomy 30, verse 6, Moses believed that the only way for people to love God was for their hearts to be circumcised. David cried after he committed adultery in Psalm 51.10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. In Ezekiel 26, 36, verse 26 through 27, this proclamation is prophesied over the people of God. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. And then as we even sung together, I trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, trust in the Lord. Surrender to the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. So can I ask you a simple question? Have you surrendered your heart to Jesus? Have you surrendered your heart to Jesus? You see, we love because Christ first loved us. And the only way that you're gonna ever be able to love the Lord your God, which is commanded by God in your life, those little ones that were here up on stage, this is not an option for them. This is a commandment from God for them to love the Lord their God with all their heart. The first thing you must do it's to confess with your mouth, Jesus, Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised God, Jesus from the dead. God's word says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen? Everyone. Amen? Some of you are like, not me. There's no way God could do that for me. Everyone. Amen? Everyone. Everyone. Surrender. 
your surrender. Number two, though, your care. Your care. How do we love the Lord with all our heart? Well, it's not just gonna be praying and receiving Christ once and then you're good. How many of y'all believe God has shaped and molded your heart and he has done a work, right? And he keeps working. I'm so thankful that I'm, I'm growing daily. I hope that I'm your pastor for the next 40 years and I hope in 30 years you'd say, you know what, Rob's matured a little because I need to grow. And this takes your care, right? Hebrews 3.12 says this, take care, brothers, lest there be any of you an evil, an unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living God. Proverbs 4.23, write this one down. This is a great verse. Keep your heart with all vigilance for for from it flows the springs of life. Isn't that good? Hebrews 4.12, this is what we're doing right now. For the word of God, is living and active. This is how we care. Are we rolling out of bed, checking our social media? Are we rolling out of bed, watching the news? Are we rolling out of bed, checking our stocks? Are we rolling out of bed in the word of God? For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit and of joints and of marrow and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So as we consider loving the Lord with all our heart, ask God to help you align your desires with his will. Ask God to remove anything that competes with your love for him and take this beautiful power of God that he wants to unleash upon your life and through daily, consistent walking in the word with God's church, watch the Lord equip you to love him with all your heart. All right, who should you be? Love the Lord with all your heart. Number two, Love the Lord with all your soul. Turn to your neighbor right now and say, all your soul. Heart is your affections and intentions. Soul is the depth of who you are. So once again, reading from so much I study this week, the Hebrew word is nephesh. incurs over 700 times in the Old Testament. And this word is connected with our bodies by connecting it to the throat. It speaks to our body's hunger and our body's thirst, our longings and our desires, but probably the most accurate translation would connect the nephesh or the soul to the whole body, right? To the whole person. All right, so Psalm 119, verse 175. It's a big chapter. Psalm 119, 175 says, let my soul live and praise you. Let your rules help me. This is where the use of that word, let my nephesh live that I may praise you. Let my whole body, my whole person. You see, we don't believe in just going to church. We believe we are the church, amen? God wants our whole lives. He doesn't just want you to hang out with him once a week here in this building. He wants every part of your life. Psalm 42, one through two. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? And so, to love God with all your nephesh means to devote your whole physical existence to your creator, to the one who granted us these amazing bodies in the first place. It's about offering your entire being with all its capabilities, with all its gifts to him in order that you might love God and love your neighbor. So what will it take to love the Lord your God with all your soul? Two things. Number one, your identity. Who are you? 
your identity. Um, you know, pastors can struggle with this. At the end of the day, too many times I identify myself as a pastor. And yes, I am. And it's an honor to be a pastor and to be your pastor. I'm so thankful. I'm so humbled by it. But at the end of the day, I'm a follower of Jesus. I'm a child of God. I'm a dad. I'm a husband. And at the end of the day, I'm nothing for you as a pastor if those things aren't in check. So I'm challenging some of us to consider our identity. Who are you? This gets back to the example that I showed a few weeks ago where my family wrote this manifesto, right? We've gone to different buildings, different homes. My wife and I have just moved for the 12th time in our marriage. And I hope my next move will be in the grave. But like everywhere we've gone, doesn't matter where we've been, we've had the same mission and this is our family manifesto. We're a family that's been loved by Jesus in order to love like Jesus so that the world will know Jesus by our love. Together we remain thankful for his love, faithful in his love and generous with his love. So do you know what the gospel offers to each and every one of you here today in regards to your identity? 2 Corinthians 5.17, he offers a new creation. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is past. Behold, the new has come. You know what he also offers to you in regards to your identity? You're a child of God. You're not just a new creation. You're a child of God. I encourage you this week, when you pray, would you call him Father, Abba, Celebrate the fact that he has adopted you through the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as a child of God. Ephesians 5, 1 through 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. All right, so your identity is how we do this with our soul. But number two, your purpose. Turn to your neighbor and say purpose. Purpose, this is important. Because when God changes your identity, he also will change your purpose, your purpose. Um, we are loved by Jesus, this is my family manifesto, in order to love like Jesus so that the world will know Jesus by our love. I want my kids to understand that God has done something in you so that he might do something through you. You are not the pinnacle of his death on the cross. He saved you so that you might be light, be salt, be both. Have y'all heard a sermon about that? He saved you to lift high his name. You have a purpose. Although, listen, religion's gonna teach you and the world's gonna teach you that your identity is in your external actions and achievements and your possessions. We know, right, that we're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, amen? But how many of y'all also know that because of that grace, to whom much is given, much is required. And so we're not working because necessarily we have to, we're working for the Lord because we want to, because we're so thankful for the love of Jesus. It's so great for each and every one of us to love like Jesus. And so God does demand for us in the Shema to love the world. As Jesus shared the love to love the Lord and to love your neighbor, our lives should reflect the love of God in every aspect of our lives. Consider Galatians 2.20. What's your purpose? Well, I'm a teacher. Well, I'm a business leader. Well, I'm a banker. Well, I'm a neighbor. Whatever it is. Here's your purpose. Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. And it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. All right, we're gonna land here. Who should you be? First of all, we're called to love the Lord your God with all your heart. Number two, with all your soul. Number three, with all your strength. With all your strength. 
All right, heart, your affections. Soul, it's your identity. It's, it's everything of who you are. Strength is your everything. Everybody say everything. Um, this is the Hebrew word miod. It occurs 300 times in scripture. Most common translation of this word is very or much. I kind of like the word, it's probably not a word, but I'm gonna say it anyways, muchness. This is your muchness. <laughs> I, I love that. You know, God's creation, when it's described for six times, right? He says, good. And then the seventh time, maod, or very, or muchness good. <laughs> Somebody like, Rob, you need to go back to school. Very, this is the extra. God has called us to love him with our muchness, with our everything. I don't want to give my scraps to God. I want to give my best to God. And I want to give above and beyond to God because God gave above and beyond to me. So now let's come back to the Shema where people are called to love God with all their heart, that is, their will and their affections, with their soul, that is, with their whole life and physical being, and now with their strength, that is, with their muchness. While this sounds kind of funny, you also do kind of get it. Your muchness. This word can intensify any word's meaning to total capacity. And so this is the final thing that you use to love God. It isn't a thing at all. It's actually everything. <laughs> Name what you do. It's that. So I know, listen, I've stepped into a church history here that's been going on. Do you know the year 2032? We'll celebrate 200 years. And, and I, I love the fact that we have so much legacy that the Lord has given to us. And anybody thankful for even the place in which we get to worship King Jesus right in the heart of the city. Well, I love that God uses us in powerful ways right here in this building once a week. Since I've been your pastor this year, We've seen people's lives transformed. We've worshiped, all those different things. But can I tell you what I'm praying about? What keeps me up at night is the everything. The fact that I believe God's called you with everything, every relationship, every opportunity at work, every game that you go to, every friendship, every resource, every material possession to be used for God and his glory. This is the strength. This is the everything. Everything is a person's life. Everything in a person's life is an opportunity to love God. And it's the very essence of be the church. Every moment, every opportunity, every ability, every capacity offers us a chance. I've been hooping on Tuesday mornings with a bunch of guys. Pray for my knees. And uh, before we go and hoop and before we play, I love just kind of leading a time of prayer. And I don't know about you, but when was the last time you just thanked God for breath in your lungs for a new day? And I love just opening up, Lord, everything today is a gift from you. Would you empower us and equip us to use this day that you've given to us to the fullest for your kingdom and for your glory. So what will it take as we close for you to love the Lord with all your strength? Number one, your service. Your service. We're starting to shift towards next week's talk. How can we be the church? Your service. Love is never just an emotion or a feeling. Love is action. God demonstrated for us his love. That while we were still sinners, what? Christ died for us. To love the Lord your God with all your strength is action. And as we're considered to love, we never forget, yes, that we love because Christ first loved us. But in that love, man, God has given us some unique gifts, hasn't he? 
some, some unique opportunities. I, I love getting to know this church. So many unique people in this church with unique gifts. And we're reminded throughout scripture, 1 Corinthians 12, 7 says, to each is given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit for the common good. There are no giftless children of God. And every single one of you have been given a gift to serve the Lord with. But number two, your generosity. Your generosity. Not just your service, but your generosity. Loving God with all our strength is also about how we steward and manage God's material resources that he's given to us. So church, to love the Lord your God with all your strength, begin to ask yourself, are you being generous right now with your time? Are you being generous with your money, with your possessions? And are they being maximized for the kingdom of God? I love Randy Alcorn's book, The Treasure Principle. And that first principle, he says, God owns everything. I'm his money manager. <laughs> so if God did an audit of your time, an audit of your possessions, an audit of your money, are you one who is loving the Lord, your God, with all your strength? Church, we're, we're called to serve generously, to serve generously. Look for opportunities to serve the Lord. They're in abundance within our own congregation, but we know this, just watch the news tonight. There's an abundance of opportunities for us to serve the Lord in our city and in our world. So we're gonna unpack at greater lengths as we close out our series on the Shema next week, more about even who you should be. But consider the words of Jesus as he challenged us with the great and first commandment. Matthew chapter 22, 37 and 38 says this. And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And then he says, this is the great and first commandment. Don't put the cart before the horse. Some are like, I want, I want God to use me in so many powerful ways. Has God worked in you first? Parents, Maybe don't start first with correcting your kids. Maybe correct yourself, because that's where it gets real. Let's consider the things that we need to repent of. Let's consider the things that we need to grow in. Let's consider our personal journey and loving the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our strength. But next week, let's then start talking about loving our neighbor. Who should we be? Luke 10, 27, Jesus answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind. And then what does he say? And your neighbor as yourself. I believe with all my heart, that God has worked in us today because he is about to work in a powerful way through us as we serve him here in this city together. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Let's lock in on King Jesus as we close out our time. We're gonna close out our time by singing a song, Build My Life. And I wanna ask for the Lord to empower us, his saints, to pour a strong foundation upon him and his word. So I wanna invite perhaps someone here today. You're giving church a try for the first time. You might be sitting up in the balcony or down here on the floor and King Jesus has spoken to you about how much he loves you. And I invite you right now to surrender your heart to Jesus. 
came, he lived, he died. He defeated sin, death, and hell so that you might have life and have it to the fullest. 